and by the way, let's put this into perspective. Yeah. We're complaining about people being friendly. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Kampai. Kampai. Uh, welcome to Learn Japanese Pod with me, Alex, and Andy. Uh, my good friend, Andy. Thank you very much for appearing on the podcast. It's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for having me. And uh, we're doing the Fun Friday edition. If you don't know what that is, it's when we stow away our Japanese textbooks and just talk about Japan, culture, life, the universe, and everything pertaining to this wonderful island. Andy is here with me today to help me talk about Tokyo. More specifically, we're talking about the really good points and the bad points of living in Tokyo. So this is an attempt to give a somewhat balanced view of Tokyo. By the way, I think I can give away the ending here. We still live here, meaning that the good points outweigh the bad points. Indeed. Now, um, Andy has been a fantastic friend of mine for how long? How long have I known you? Is it 10 Jeez, years? It's gotta be 10 years, yeah. That's so crazy. And uh, by the way, let me tell you how I met Andy. I met Andy through the Japanese pod. That's right. Right, yeah. right. So, you you can tell the story. How did you meet me? So, so let me let me back up a little bit. So, yeah. I first came to Japan as a musician at Tokyo Disney. Yeah, and I met my wife at there, who was also a musician over there, Japanese woman, lovely person named Junko, and uh, and we then went back to the U.S. for a little while and came back here, and uh, and we were raising our daughter. And as I was starting to learn Japanese, mm. I was listening to this podcast called Learn Japanese Pod. <laughs> now I was also teaching audio production. And I'm right. like, you know what? There are a couple little things I might be able to add to this. <laughs> How can I put this politely? The audio sucks on your podcast. But actually, this was a fantastic meeting. You yeah. totally helped me out with yeah. a million things. It's been really cool. I have to say, you know, yeah. in in the interest of full disclosure, yes. I have not kept up with my Japanese study. And I need to get back on the horse. Well, but well, I do enjoy listening to the podcast. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Well, I think this could actually be the beginning of a new opportunity for you to get back on the horse and uh, start getting your Japanese together. We you can know, help you. I need to do it. I need to do it. Maybe we can kind of like crowdsource it all together. Let's crowdsource Every it. And also, you know, if you're out there and, you know, you started Japanese and maybe you you stopped studying or maybe you, you lost motivation, I think from now on, listen to podcasts with Andy and I. And maybe we can uh, keep tabs on Andy's progress. The great thing about that is that anybody listening wouldn't be the slowest person in the class. <laughs> oh, now, now, don't don't put yourself down. <laughs> That's your job. That's my <laughs> job. Exactly, exactly. But um, anyway, yeah. So um, we met through Learn Japanese Pod, and oh, by the way, Jinko San, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Yoroshiku. And yoroshiku. Uh, and and so one thing's led to another, and and now here we are. Talking about the good and the bad, and we are, of course, the ugly. We were going to call this podcast The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly of Tokyo. The good and the bad we've worked out, and the ugly, that's us. It's self-evident. That's, that's just yeah. us. That's us. So, shall we move on to day, today's topic? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. In the interests of international diplomacy, we thought we would start with the bad first. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get that out. Of, let's get the bad out of the way. And by the way, we do have more good points than bad. This one's this one's might be a little bimyo. Choto bimyo, ne? Choto bimyo. Oh wait, oh, that's a good to... word, right? Yeah. It's, um, hey, but what does bimyo mean? Bimyo, bimyo is actually okay. If you don't know Japanese really well, it's like the Swiss Army knife of Japanese words. It's <laughs> right. It's so if if you don't want to answer a question because it's a secret, you don't have to remember himitsu. Um, yeah, yeah, secret, himitsu, right? Yeah, yeah. So like for, for example, in Japanese, if someone says nansai desu ka, so Japanese people ask you what your age is, instead of saying Himitsu this, which means it's a secret. You can say bimyo. Now, can you explain bimyo? Bimyo again is a word that has a lot of meaning along the spectrum, but basically it means delicate topic. Yeah, good, good, right. Good, good. So it, it just basically means it could mean secret. It could mean I don't want to talk about it. It could mean why are you even asking me? It yeah. could mean so many things. So, but it is the ultimate get out of the conversation card, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. and. If you do it in the right way, it comes off as a, you know, a funny joke. You're, you're not being standoffish or rude or anything. There. Especially if, if a foreigner says it because it's kind of a deep Japanese word. It's not, it's not yeah. your, your, it's not your normal, 
kind of surface culture word. It's 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 pretty deep in the culture, right? And 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 so actually, the word bimyo kind of feeds into the thing. It's a, yeah. So, so this first thing is not only delicate, yeah, but it it is part of what is not fantastic sometimes about yeah. living in Japan. Yeah. So everybody talks about you know Japanese culture. So people come to visit Japan, they leave Japan, they're like, oh, everybody's so friendly. Yeah. They're polite, but sometimes sometimes you will find that the politeness is is not the most sincere politeness. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which is great because at least they're trying, right? Yeah, at least right. they have politeness. Right. But every once in a while, I think, you know, as a Westerner who comes from a culture where individuality and self-expression are, are highly valued, yeah. deferentialism and, and mm. politeness um, – at the expense of what they actually feel, yeah, um, right. sometimes can can get you into a, uh, not into trouble, but it, it it can paint a picture of, you know what? Mm. It can sometimes leave you with an impression mm. that is not actually what's going on. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, and as uh, maybe like a foreigner who's new to Japan, you're fresh off the plane, you might not actually understand what's going on. It can sometimes feel a bit insincere. Now we are talking about Tokyo here, and again. The, we're, we're talking in huge generalizations but oh, huge uh, but i would say though that there is definitely a difference when you're dealing with people in osaka versus tokyo again we're talking huge stereotypes everyone's different everyone's an individual but the general stereotype is osaka people tend to be a bit more direct they express their emotions more truthfully i would say yeah i mean there's no yeah. veneer of, of kind of social acceptance on there um yeah. for example um, Osaka is the only place where people have struck up conversations with me on the train, yeah, you know, right, right, so it's right. like, and, and they'll come up and they just, you know, how are you doing? Where you're from? All that. It's just really nice. And, and they're friendly and you get that kind of, uh, of a genuine vibe that you don't always get in Tokyo. In yeah. Tokyo, it's, it's a little bit more, you know, structured and, 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 and metropolitan perhaps. Another way you might want to call it is it's the first city syndrome. So a bit like yeah. London. It's just the it's capital city. It's super busy. People don't have the time of day for you. So on an individual level, Japanese people super, super polite. But if you kind of look at it as a city, you know, it's going to be a bit cold. And by the way, let's put this into perspective. Yeah. We're complaining about people being friendly. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so that gives you that gives you an idea of how terrible it is to live here. Oh yeah. my God, the people aren't always sincere with their friendliness. Yeah. It's, it's not a terrible just, place. We don't we don't like that particular type of friendliness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh dear, listen to us. Okay, number two, the bad of Tokyo. All events are expensive and crowded in Tokyo. So, for example, if there's like a fireworks event, if there's some something cool going on in um, Midtown in Roppongi, Oish. which is like an area, yeah, it's just crowded with people you're going to have to queue for three hours and it's going to cost you 50 to 60 dollars equivalent in yen it's not fun you're stuck you and especially in the summer it's hot it's sweaty you're stuck shoulder to shoulder with people it just kills all the joy of going outside and attending an event so yesterday we had hanabi now hanabi mm. means fireworks basically means a fireworks festival yeah and, uh, and me and my wife, Junko, and our daughter, Sachko, we went out and we took the train, took about an hour and a half. Yeah. And we had to walk to wherever we were going to camp out. Yeah. And if we hadn't gotten there really early, we would never have gotten there. I right, mean, right, it, right, right. It, you know, within an hour of when the fire was started, it was completely jam packed. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous. Now, it wasn't that expensive because it was out in the country. So mm. there is a Tokyo metropolitan thing. So... So if you're yeah. in, um, you know, in downtown, you're in Shinjuku or Shibuya or Roppongi. Yeah. Um, you're paying a boatload for just about everything. Yeah. Um, this was out in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. um, and so it wasn't that expensive, but yeah. it definitely was crowded. But generally, Tokyo, let's, let's also and put in the bad column. Not bad, but it's, it's just the way it is, is everything in Japan is pretty expensive. Yeah, right. But the good thing well, is, well, is when you travel, yeah. you feel like a millionaire. Uh, oh my God. Uh, 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 everything uh, 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 is so cheap it's like wow oh i see you mean when when you're traveling in asia or oh yeah. yeah so, yeah, so yeah, i yeah, sure. in my job i do a lot of travel it, yeah it's amazing it's like wow everything is so inexpensive you get in a taxi yeah. it's like okay how many how many tens of dollars do i have to pay for that it's like two dollars well you know what we should do we should table this for another podcast which is uh cheap ways to get around tokyo that's, mm. that's another one yeah it can be done it can be done if yep. you know if you know that's what you're doing one. 
So yeah, um, all events, they're expensive, they're crowded, they can be a pain in the posterior area. It can be. The next one, um, I'll let Andy kick off with this. Moving apartment or moving house in Tokyo is purgatory. It's not... Okay, parts of it are... I will say this, yeah. that the moving companies here are astonishing. Yes, yes. Um, You know, you, you get into the moving companies and, and they will box all your stuff up. They won't scrape anything. They, they put liners on the walls. So yeah. they, as they move things out of your house, they don't scrape the walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the moving companies, although they're very expensive, and you, you don't have to do it all the time, but they're very expensive, but they are extremely good at what they do. Meticulous attention to detail. Yeah, just impressive. And and they won't let you help if you if you offer. I mean, they've got this covered. Yeah, every okay. every single toothpick in your house will be packed. Now, you can feel the butt coming. But. <laughs> nice timing, by the way. <laughs> but they're... But the landlords, and this is just my experience, and yeah. I've only lived in a couple of apartments here yeah. in Japan. Yeah, they've got these deposits, which they call key money, right? Yeah, and normal wear and tear, in my opinion, should not be something that you have to pay for. Yeah, yeah. I got charged a boatload of money, which I won't say. In yeah. my first apartment for damage from the sun bleaching the carpet. Oh, I dear. said you should build the sun. <laughs> they weren't they weren't really into that but there was like there's no way i mean that's that that is that is part of in my opinion mm. that is part of the normal wear and tear of of an apartment yeah and, right, and there's right. no possible first of all there's no possible way you could avoid it yeah and second of all there's no possible way i should be responsible for the bleaching of the <laughs> right. carpet by the sun but i was and, and, and that's just the way you have to deal with it when you move into a new impo- a new apartment in tokyo they have two types of fees that you have to pay. One is called reiking and the other one's called shikikin. So reiking is literally translated as thank you money. And it's literally, it will be one to two times the monthly rent. And you'll never see that again. And you'll never see, because it's like, it's kind of thank you. And I, I would call it kind of sayonara money. It's like you just pay it. And, and you say sayonara money. Shikikin. Is kind of like, I don't know what you would call it. Just let's just call it a deposit. It's a deposit. And yep. you're supposed to, as the name suggests, get it back because it's a deposit. However, in my experience, moving house or apartment in Tokyo at least four, five times. Oh, you've done it more than me. Yeah, I've 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 moved around quite a bit. Um, from tiny little matchbox to tiny little matchbox, I didn't get much of it back. Like ninety percent of it went. That's not a deposit. It's it's shikiking. Now in Osaka, correct me if I'm wrong. From vaguely, I remember it was called hoshoking, which is kind of like literally translated as guarantor money. And in my experience, I got more of it back oh, really? in Osaka on in Osaka than compared to when I moved in Tokyo. So the one big problem, and this this isn't this isn't just foreigners moving in in Tokyo for everyone, a lot of young people who don't have access to literally thousands of dollars to move actually end up either living at home or some people like really extreme cases, they're like semi-homeless and they live in internet cafes. Just they make that they have a job, they're making money, they're not saving any money, but they they, they literally can't move because they yeah. they've do, so imagine if the rent um the monthly rent for Tokyo is not too bad, depending nope. on where you are, compared to London, where you have to be some kind of international oligarch. Or It's not so much that you can't afford to stay there. You can't afford to leave because you know you're going to lose that deposit. Exactly. And that exactly. deposit is a, is a significant amount of money. Yeah. And the, and the, other, the other problem is after two years, you have to pay a renewal fee. Anyway, long story short, it is a pain in the posterior. Andy? Let me hand over to you for the fourth point, which is smoking. Let me say, when I retire, I'm going to invent an alarm clock. When the alarm clock rings, a pack of cigarette just pops out with one already lit. Because I'm telling you, there are people here who, who turn smoking into an art. <laughs> so it, 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 it's bizarre, right? Because yeah. it's such a healthy culture in so many ways, right? Yes, yes, yes. But there are a couple of ways. Alcohol. And, and smoking, smoking and tobacco, mm. which is, 
it, it like takes all the benefits and equalizes it right back to the rest of the world. <laughs> it, yeah, it takes that incredibly healthy Japanese diet and equalizes it to the West. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. right. But, but that's not what bothers me. If you, if you want to smoke, that's no problem. But you'll find these restaurants, like family restaurants. Yeah. And, and the family restaurant, you know darn well that yeah. they don't have a smoking section. They have a little plastic sign that says no smoking. <laughs> and you know that it's on a different table every day. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and by the way, that that sign is going to be on a table of people who can't smoke right next to them with no glass, no, yeah. no nothing, yeah. is going to be another table that doesn't have that sign yeah. and the people are smoking. Right. You know, you got in, in the West, it's smoking has become so taboo that yeah. usually you can't do it in public places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you can, you're in a hermetically sealed steel cage, right? Yeah, right, 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 and, right. And and nobody's gonna smell any of that tobacco. That's not the way it is here. Yeah. It I mean, it does depend on the restaurant. Like most restaurants, most I don't know. I'd like to let's see the data on this now, but Japanese government have been very reluctant to meet global standards on smoking, at least, you know, compared to the West. And so what they've done is they have information campaigns and it's not don't smoke, it's be a good smoker. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like on the on the chain on the trains, you can see the Japanese tobacco little signs yeah, about yeah, 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 know, yeah, yeah, yeah. good guy does this, the bad guy does That's this. That. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and so I will say this. Yeah. You know, in in the context of the things that we're complaining about with Japan is that I think that amongst the younger people, the amount of tobacco use has, has gone down significantly. Oh, I, I think, I think Japan, yeah. uh, 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 tobacco, I think, is on its way out. Yeah, I, I, it, it's definitely on its way out. There has apparently been a bit of a an increase in usage with young females, like women in their 20s and 30s, because, really? yeah, I, I think overall it's gone down, but there's been a slight uptick, and that's because a lot of... Japanese tobacco companies have been aiming their marketing at the younger female market. In other words, they're selling cigarettes with pink sakura flowers on the boxes. I kid you not. Yes. If you smoke, it's not a problem. Go smoke. But if I'm having dinner and and I don't want to smell cigarette smoke, having a table right next to me of people that's smoking is not my idea of a smoking section. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and that's that's just my thing. No, I yeah, me too. But um, oh, by the way, let's flip this on its head. If you're a smoker, you're gonna love Japan, and this was one <laughs> right. of the good points. But if you're a smoker, it, this is actually one of the good things. About this is Japan. this is one of the good things about Japan. If you're a smoker, I mean, you can pretty much smoke anywhere. And actually, I'm gonna I'm naming names. I'm naming names right now. Shibuya Ward. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Shibuya Ward. I've actually noticed that like different wards, so Tokyo is divided into wards. It seems like they're very lax on the policing of smoking. Well, they're not laws, are they? They're more kind of like oh, guidelines. Guidelines, yeah. They're suggestions. more like gu <laughs> suge suggestions. Maybe it's yeah. good not to smoke next to a table of pregnant female asthmatics, but. Oh, um, but, but but you know whatever. if you but whatever yeah so Shibuya <laughs> is really bad it's it's terrible so I'm calling you out Shibuya but Ward. It's, it's everywhere like I live close to a, a park no Galway yeah. it's a fantastic park I walk around yeah. there all the time and there's nothing better yeah for my day yeah to be walking in the fresh air and to smell the flowers and see the children playing and then have a guy ride his bike and and he looks like a train basically <laughs> with all this smoke coming off of him of the cigarette that's hanging out of his mouth. Right, it's it's a true joy. Oh, oh us, oh us. The last bad point we're going to talk about Tokyo is a bit of an epic point, and it segues very nicely into the good points. Andy, what's another thing we can't stand about Tokyo? We absolutely hate about Tokyo. What is it? People who complain, especially British foreigners. people. <laughs> <laughs> The monocle just popped out my eye, sir. How dare you? This is the thing. Okay, so there's... If you don't mind me monopolizing... Am I monopolizing? No, 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 no. You you, 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 you monopolize. You go, girl. <laughs> That's what I always say to myself. In my experience, and I think yours, yeah. every foreigner who comes here for any kind of a long-term engagement falls into one of two categories. Yep. Either they 
geek out completely and they love everything that's different. And they, they, they revel and they grow in, in the difference of cultures. Mm-hmm. So you know, have natto. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. You know, try Japanese sake. Oh, awesome. 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 Yeah. You know, everything. Yeah. You know, Hanami. Oh, that's great. 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 Yeah. Or they're the gaijin who realizes about five minutes after they got off the plane that they made a huge mistake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, and, right. And, and they can't wait to find their first McDonald's and live there for the rest of their life. Yeah, right, you know, right, and, right. And, and it's everything that's different. It's just such a pain. And it's like, oh, why do I have to walk all the way to the station? Where's my car? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And every, everything's just such an inconvenience because they're expecting Japan, which is not like any other part, in the, you know, yeah. not any part of the West. Yeah. They expect that to be somehow, you know, accommodating to their Western sensibilities, mm-hmm. which it will never be. Yeah, of course. Right. And so, and, and I will tell you from my perspective as being a long-term resident, as, mm. as yeah, you are, me too, yeah. is hearing people complain about how rough it is that they go into the <laughs> 7-Eleven and they can't read any of the things and they don't know what they're buying. Uh, I'm crying you a river. It well, just drives it, me nuts. Well, what, was, what was that scene in uh, beginning of Pulp Fiction where he's like, see this? It's the smallest violin in the world. It's like boo-hoo-hoo. Now, we're not saying you have to be poly Anarish about this and like everything is wonderful no criticize what sucks and praise what's awesome right but um and also the other thing too is like you know don't underestimate the um the waves of culture shock that you'll experience oh, so completely and you go through these waves of everything's awesome everything's like really tough because you don't have a frame of reference you can't speak japanese you're not sure how to order food it gets very stressful but anyway, you, you get to this kind of like, it is what it is. And actually, on balance, it's great. It's, it's a great fantastic. place. It's I mean, a, there's, it's a know, great place. This is the thing is, mm. is if you're the kind of person that's that is upset by change, stay away from Japan. Yeah, yeah because yeah. there's nothing like this place that's like, you know, like like New York, where I'm yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely nothing. And and if if change is something that's going to make you uncomfortable, then it's this is not the place for you. If change is something that's going to grow you as a person, this is the yeah, best. You know, yeah, this is absolutely. so it's it's. But don't be that guy that mm-hmm. complains all the time. You know, that's it's it's not cool. It, it's not cool, and um, you're not gonna, you're not you're not going to be happy. Stop, com- Andy. Stop complaining about people who complain. Stop it. Sorry. <laughs> Bottom line, on one end of the spectrum, there are the people who complain and they wish they were back home and they yeah. never should have come here. There's other people that try way too hard to. Mm to convince everybody that they, that they're, you know, assimilating, which is, I think there, there's a balance in there somewhere. Let me just throw this out. Yeah. Is one central tenant of yeah. Japanese culture is balance. Yes. That good one. Yeah. So, so people balance a, a healthy diet with drinking so much that their liver falls out. Right. Yes. <laughs> they work hard and they play hard. Right. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. but it's a balance. So as a foreigner living in Japan, mm. There's a balance there too. Don't mm. be the guy who 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 cleaves too much to his his home country. Yeah. Also, don't be the guy who tries too hard to convince everybody that the they're Japanese. comfortable in Japan. Yeah. You know, just you know, find the balance, right? Yeah. You know, and th- I think in finding the balance, you're actually understanding a, an important part of Japanese culture. Mm. Alex. Yes. We've gotten too far into the negative. Let's change tack. I think this is the perfect time to switch into the good Which of there's Tokyo. There's so much of, right? There's so much of. Uh, the good outshines the bad. By a lot. I came to Tokyo as an exchange student, a language student. I came here to study Japanese intensively for a year. As, as a language student, I found that Japanese people were super, super patient with me. And that's something in Tokyo. Actually, not just Tokyo, but all over Japan, people are very patient with you. If the Japanese people that you meet and that you work with, that you're 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 floundering with your language, yeah. If they know that you're making an effort, they will be patient with you until the end of days. It comes yeah. down to the character. Yeah. You know, and one of the things I love about about Japan is mm. it's so much about your moral character. It's yes. about it's about the quality of your of your your personality and your your steadfastness and your work ethic and all these things that I think are are super important and they will nurture that until yeah. the, until their last breath. It's, it is mm-hmm. really encouraging the amount of support you can get if you're willing to make an effort. And if you show that you're making an effort, they will bend over backwards to help you. So you don't have to succeed. Yeah. You have to just show that you're making an effort. 
Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, that is absolutely true. Actually, um, a quick shout out to the ALT Insider podcast, which I was listening to the other day. It's a very good podcast. You should listen to. It's about being an English teacher in Japan, and he was talking about the similar thing. He had this really interesting podcast on what Japanese teachers want from their foreign assistant teachers, and one of them was teamwork. And part of teamwork in Japan is showing enthusiasm that you're trying to help, that you're supporting the other members in the group. So showing enthusiasm and that you're trying to succeed, even though your Japanese may suck, even though you might not know anything about the culture of Japan. As long as you're, you know, you're trying, they are super, super patient and super, super supportive. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's one of the things I love about living here. Yeah. Kind of along the same lines of, yeah. of that kind of that teamwork kind of thing. Yeah. I, one of the things, and this is this is more of an event than a thing about Japan. Yeah. But you remember 311. Yes, 311, when there was a huge earthquake and the tsunami came. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. And I remember back in the day, you know, they, they turned off all the nuclear power plants. It was, it was a real crisis. No yeah. kidding. It was yeah. a crisis. Yeah. And they were saying, you know, we're going to have to turn off all the power plants and we're going to have to have rolling blackouts. So everybody, please, if you can, try to save electricity. I saw for about a year, mm. Japan shut off half of the escalators. Mm. The pachinko parlors had half the lights on. Mm, 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 mm. Everybody, everybody actually did try to save electricity. And and those, you know, those rolling blackouts. Yeah, it happened like in my in my uh, town in, yeah. in Mitaka. Yeah, it happened like once yeah. in a summer, and then it never had to happen again. Why? Because everybody pulled together as a yeah, team. Yeah, right, right, right. And it was it was. I, I'm not Japanese. I know I'm never going to be Japanese, but I was proud to mm. be a part of the culture mm, that pulled mm, together mm. in in the face of something that was really truly horrible and very scary. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, right. And, and it, it was really neat to see everybody kind of make it happen together. Yeah. I, I, I will say that in crisis, a culture can either pull together or pull apart. Yeah, right. right. And, and I was just so pleased that, that Japan, when they needed to pull together, their, their sense of community and their sense of harmony and their sense of, of, of working together, all the things that you see in other ways in, in Japanese culture. Yeah. Um, are, it, it just... It, it was amazing. It yeah. was it was amazing. It was breathtaking. Yeah. It, it, it was it was something to see. Now let's move on to the next point. Okay. Um, this is actually the third point. Um, Andy, you you take us through this point here. So let's talk about food, Alex. Let's oh, my favorite topic. So let's talk about convenience stores, Alex. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, and, I, and first of all, let me back up. In the convenience store, yeah. After three eleven, yeah. I noticed that three things were missing. Yeah. One, water. Yeah. Two, rice. Yeah. Three, every single kind of alcohol that the <laughs> <laughs> every single kind of alcohol they had. So people were drinking water. <laughs> they were making onigiri, and they were getting blind drunk. <laughs> it makes me proud to it live in Japan. Makes me proud to be living in Japan. <laughs> But, but <laughs> outside of, of 311, yeah. if you go to the convenience store, yeah. you can have a meal that is, is basically health food in any other part of the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you can get amazingly <laughs> good food. Like food in general yeah. is amazing in Tokyo. It's it, got to be one of the top rated cities for food. Well, I think statistically speaking, Tokyo, easy for you to say. <laughs> statistically speaking, um, Tokyo has the highest number of Michelin five-star restaurants of any city in the world, right? I will tell you, it, 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 in Japan, pick a direction, follow your nose. You'll yeah. find an amazing place to eat. But yeah. my point is, is even like their basic food, even mm. the food that you would find in, in a place that has the most informal non-gourmet food, yeah. you can find really healthy food to yeah. eat if you look. I mean, and, and mm. it's, it's, it's not even hard, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, th there's a technique I like to use, um, to find a good restaurants in Japan. What you do is you just randomly go to a random point in Tokyo, put a blindfold on, someone spins you, and then you just walk in a random direction. You will hit an incredibly delicious restaurant. 
the problem with um, finding good restaurants in Tokyo is not so much where can I find you know the best place to eat is like which place can I pick? It's like which right. place shall I not go to? So you know, can I make you, a recommendation for all you listeners coming here? Oh, I think. I, oh, wait, wait. Say it after three, right? Three, two, one. Wadayaki. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this this place, yeah. Wadayaki. It's a great example. Yeah. Okay. So this is a place, and actually, it's a chain. And usually, yeah. I, I, I you eschew, don't like chains. I, I, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like the Western chains and the and the family restaurant chains. I stay away. Yeah. From that. But this is one of those places. That I there's food there mm. that when you eat it, you will feel like a better person. <laughs> you, you actually you'll feel like uh, you've done something constructive with your life. <laughs> so good. it's ri- it's ridiculously delicious. Yeah. Oh, just I think. By the way, uh, just in 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 full disclosure, Wadiakia is paying for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they were. I really wish they were. Hey, let's go on to the next point. All right. Tokyo is, compared to many cities, unbelievably clean. It's incredible. Um, compared to some parts of London where I uh, used to live, it's amazing. It it's really so clean. is. Yeah. It, it's so clean. And, and, and I think this ties into you know, the, the community spirit that people have. Mm. You don't see people litter. I don't think I've seen somebody actually throw a wrapper or, yeah. or anything in a very long time. I'd like to put out there a theory I have. It's not even my theory. Um, um, the theory is Japanese kids in elementary school have this thing called kyushoku, right? And kyushoku is basically they serve their own lunch. And then at the end of the day, they clean their own classroom. That's right. Tokyo is super, super clean. Super it's at clean. least relatively clean. And it's also, this leads on to the next point, it's safe. It's a pretty safe city, don't you think? I, You know where I leave my wallet? Right outside my front door every day. <laughs> because it's convenient for me when I go to the convenience store, I just pick it up. You just pick it up. <laughs> um, I think we're exaggerating for purposes of entertainment. But no. yeah, generally speaking, um, in my 20-something years of living in uh Tokyo, I have never, uh, almost never experienced or even seen a violent in, uh, incident. Let me tell you. So in, in my park, Nogaokon, which yeah. I think I've mentioned, um, if somebody forgets their stuff, like yeah. let's, let's say like right now, yeah. um, somebody forgot their hat. Yes. A kid forgot their hat. Mm. Do you know what they did? Somebody found it, picked it up and put it on, on a post. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, so that the kid could find it. Not only did they not take it. Yeah. Right. Not only did they not throw it away, yeah, they they actually lifted it off the ground so it would stay clean, and yeah, so that somebody could right, find right, it easier. Right, 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 it right. is the most honest place I've ever seen. Let me one up you, if I may. Please. I, being a complete imbecile, as you know, left my three thousand dollar classical guitar in the train as it was heading out of Kyoto. I got off at Kyoto Station as the doors were shutting. As they were shutting, I realized I'd left it on the uh, top of the... Uh, the little you, rack there? The little rack, yeah. Mm-hmm. The doors are shutting. Everything went into slow motion, and it was literally like the cliche, No! And the door shut, and off the train went. I ran like a crazy person to the lost and found office, which most stations have. Mm-hmm. I reported it. They took it down. They found my guitar and returned it to me within two hours i i we did our honeymoon in kyoto oh nice nice oh yeah it's actually pretty cool um and we did we went to one of the onsen yeah went to a a public bath um and i had at that point i had this kind of jade necklace thing yeah i took it off and i forgot it there right oh no way and i and 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 we were done with the with honeymoon we went back to tokyo yeah okay and and i'm like oh no i forgot it and junko's like i would just call him yeah, and we called them. And by the way, anywhere in the U.S., they would say, "Yeah, we we either they would they would say we never found it, or they would say, yeah, we found it, we threw it away because it was nothing, right? It was like <laughs> a little jade. It was it wasn't anything valuable. It wasn't like a guitar. Yeah, it was nothing, yeah. right? And they're like, yeah, we found it. We we've, we've kept it. Um, what's your address? No and we way. gave it the address, yeah. and and we're like, uh, Daijoba, is it okay, Daijoba? And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they put it in an envelope. And they they mailed it to us with a little kind of a tissue, a napkin kind of thing with an extra gift. And I figured if I just leave stuff around in Japan, (laughs) 
that it'll get returned with little tiny right, gifts, which right. I think I can sell. I could make a I could make a living <laughs> out of just leaving stuff around and having people give me extra stuff as they return the stuff that I left. You are a terrible guy, Jin. I'm an entrepreneur, is what you're looking for. <laughs> same thing, same thing. Andy, a word for you. Are you ready? Give me the word. Transportation. Oh my god. Hey, listen, if you're in Tokyo, transportation second to none. Amazing. They have an extensive rail and bus network. All the trains run on time. They're almost never late, sometimes late, but generally incredibly punctual. And I will tell you this, they go everywhere you need to go. If you can't get there by train, you don't need to get there. Mm. You know, okay. When I lived in America, yeah. I drove a Ford. Do you know yeah. what I drive here? What do you drive here, Andy? Nothing. <laughs> Why? Because I don't need a car. Yeah. My yeah. wife has a car for groceries and stuff, but I I, I don't need. I, I I haven't even felt the desire to update my license. I live in the center-ish of Tokyo. I live a couple of I live like one kilometer away from Yogi Park, pretty central. Yeah. Andy lives out in the burbs. But um, you know, and it's where you live, it's really nice. Lots of countryside. You've Lots got this of beautiful river, really nice parks. How long does it take you to get into the center of Tokyo? Okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. By car or by train? Both. If I had to drive here by car, yeah, probably would take me close to two hours. No way, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, with all with all the stoplights and all that. Yeah. By train, yeah, about an hour and fifty minutes. Yeah, it's 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 really not that far. It's it's far quicker for me to go by train and. You know, so this is the thing. If you're if you're mm. a, a listener who's who's never been to Japan, you probably when you think of trains, you think about that the the videos of of all the people on the Chuo line yeah. stuffing other people into the train. Yeah, yeah. Now does that happen? It does from yeah. time to time. Yeah. And I will tell you, if you're riding certain lines during rush hour in the yeah. morning, you're getting very close to a lot of other people. Yes. I mean, it 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 is pretty packed. And by the way, the worst lines are the Tozai line. Chuo. The- Chuo line can be bad, and also the Saikyo line. How's the Yamanote line? Yamanote line's never that bad. Really? I mean, and by the way, the, the, the funny thing I always see is people running for the Yamanote line. The Yamanote line is a circular line that encompasses Tokyo, and trains come every three minutes. Right. It's insane. You don't need to run for that train. Now, there are some crowded train lines but generally speaking delayed trains or canceled trains very rare it almost never happens in fact mm. here's an interesting trivia about tokyo mm. is if you if you are late for work because of a train delay yeah you should go to the train station before you before you get out of the train station go to the train station guy yeah and he will give you a little slip of paper that basically says <laughs> we are so sorry it's our fault that it's our fault that this guy was late. Now, why train, why would you need to do that? And here's why: is if you get to work late, yeah, and you say oh, I'm late because the train was late. If you don't have that slip of paper, the trains are so punctual and so consistent that they won't believe you. Yeah, right, right. right? right. Unless you have that piece of paper to back you up, they're like, yeah, yeah, try again. You're yeah, late. yeah, right. Um, the trains are are extraordinarily consistent. You know, it, it's fantastic, and um. Also, trains between cities. So if you're taking JR over oh. overground trains, super quick. Now, they're not... Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I would ride the Shinkansen for fun. <laughs> it's, it's basically like being on a plane, but with big seats. And there's no chance of crashing. And there's no chance of crashing, yeah. Andy, how many fatalities have there been on the Shinkansen? I think none, right? I think pretty much that, yeah. I yeah, think zero. It, it, it's super, super safe. And it's so much fun to ride it. Now, let's finish with the final point of why okay. Tokyo is awesome. And that is actually embedded within the names of one of the shops that you use the most on a daily basis. And that is... Convenience? Convenience. Convenience. Com- right. Combini. Tokyo is very combini. Unbelievably convenient. So, for example, transportation. We've already gone through that. And also... If you want to buy earbuds at 3.30 a.m. in the morning, you can walk literally 250 meters to your local convenience store because they're everywhere. And they got everything. And they got everything you need. So 
the thing is, is like, you know, you're, oh, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night. You need a snack. No problem. You're covered. It's, it's, I'll tell you what, you know, I mean, you and I both have lived here for a long time. Yeah. And, and can you imagine being a foreigner in any other country yeah. and being able to get around as easily as we can? Yeah. Right. right I mean, right, it's, right. it's, it's an unbelievably, uh, Aside from the language, the language yeah. is challenging. There's no yeah. getting around it. There, you know, the society can be challenging. We've mm. talked about the things that that can be, I, I think, a little bit difficult to get used to. Yeah. But if you're willing to put in a small amount of effort, yeah, you can get around here. You can get anything. You can live. You can you can live with a family. You can yeah. live by yourself. You can do it. Um, if you've got an interest in coming to Japan, but you're a little bit scared that you can't get around and you won't be supported you mm. won't find nice people to help you mm. you won't find the trains you won't be able to find food take it from one who knows mm. one who who came to japan without a week before i didn't know i was coming to japan right mm. I'll, I'll tell you i can't imagine a better place not only to live now mm. but i can't imagine a better place to have come even as a beginning traveler yeah traveler. right right it's, it's, right, it's, right. it's a great place that it's just got everything for everybody. Yeah. Um, and you can get it, you know I mean? You can, mm. if you're, if you're willing to put in just a little bit of effort, you know, the payoff of, of living in Japan is, is really fantastic. It's like great. I, great. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm here. Um, uh, you're here. I don't think either one of us yeah. have, have got any, you know, plans to, to be leaving anytime soon. It's, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's a fantastic place, you know, and we're, we complained. I, I feel like we need to kind of do a mea culpa. We, we spent the first half of this, this podcast complaining, complaining, you know, about uh, all the things that are wrong. And there are things that are wrong. Of course, everything's, you know, no, no, no place is perfect. Nowhere. Yeah. No place is perfect. Um, and at the same time, we, d we didn't want to do this kind of overly optimistic podcast on how wonderful everything is, but there's good and bad, but on balance, the reason we've been here for so long is because Tokyo is awesome. Anyway. So that was the good and the bad of Tokyo. I think we was on balance. There's more good, definitely way more good than bad. Definitely. Um, and by the way, Tokyo is not the only city in Japan. Nagoya, Osaka, Kagoshima, millions Kyoto. Of Kyoto, yeah. Amazing places to visit, which we may do podcasts on in the future. I think we should travel there and do podcasts. I think that's a brilliant idea. Andy, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. It was crazy fun. Thank you so much. It was good fun. Let's do it again. Let's absolutely do it again. And uh, if you've got any comments, please leave a comment on the website or you can find us on Twitter at Japanese Podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Learn Japanese Pod. You can send me an email at info at learnjapanesepod.com. And please check out the website at learnjapanesepod.com. It was a pleasure, Andy. Thank you so much. The pleasure was all mine. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.